Hey guys, welcome to a tutorial on sparse tables. Today we'll be looking at how to answer certain types of range queries in constant time. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to stay notified about future uploads. The problem we're trying to solve today is as follows. Given an array of n integers, we have to process q queries, where for each query we have to find the minimum value in the range L through R. Let's call an interval good if its size is a power of 2. For now, let's consider a simpler problem where each query interval is good. Why are good intervals useful? We can see that a good interval can be broken down into multiple good intervals that are also good. For example, a good interval of size 4 can be broken down into two good intervals of size 2. A good interval of size 2 could be broken down into two good intervals of size 1. This is due to the fact that 2 to the power i can be written as 2 to the power i minus 1 plus 2 to the power i minus 1. So for each index, if we could pre-compute for every power of 2 size interval beginning at that index, the minimum value, then we could quite easily solve this problem. And we could do that because firstly, we saw that each good interval can be broken down into smaller good intervals. And secondly, for every index, or for any given index, there are at most log of n good intervals beginning at that index. Let me introduce the idea of sparse tables. Let's make a table of log n rows and n columns. Now, for any given cell in this table, the cell stores the minimum value for 2 to the power i elements starting at that cell. So in the first row, we have i is equal to 0 and 2 to the power 0 is equal to 1. So the first row is just the initial array. Now let's look at the second row. We have i is equal to 1. 2 to the power 1 is equal to 2. So each cell stores the minimum value in the array for two cells starting at that index. For example, for j is equal to 1 and i is equal to 1, we have the minimum value in the first two indices of the array. For j is equal to 2 in this row, you have the minimum value between j is equal to 2 and j is equal to 3. For j is equal to 3 in this row, we store the minimum value for j is equal to 3 and j is equal to 4. For the row where i is equal to 2, we store the minimum value for 4 cells beginning at that index. So j is equal to 1 stores the minimum value among the four, first 4 cells of our initial array. j is equal to 2 stores the minimum value among the next 4 indices of our initial array. And so on. And these blank cells are just blank because, for example, in i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 10. If we try to store the minimum value for two cells starting at j is equal to 10, we wouldn't be able to do that as we'd have to go outside the array. So we, we see that we have log n rows and n columns. This table is directly n log n. And computing the value for any cell is O of 1. So the first row is just the initial array. Now how do we compute the second row? To compute the minimum value for two cells starting at j is equal to 1, we just have to combine the answer for j is equal to 1, i is equal to 0, and i is equal to 0, and j is equal to 2. For j is equal to 2 and i is equal to 1, we just have to combine the answer for i is equal to 0, j is equal to 2, and i is equal to 0, and j is equal to 3. Let's look at i is equal to 2. Here, the answer is just a combination of i is equal to 1, j is equal to 1, and i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 3. Because we know that this i is equal to 1 row stores the minimum value for two cells starting at those indices, and i is equal to 2 stores the minimum value for four cells starting at those indices. So we break down an interval of size 4 into two intervals of size 2, and because we already know the answer for two intervals of size 2, we join them in constant time, and we can store this value here. We could quite simply just print out the value directly from here for any good interval. Now what happens when we don't have a constraint on the length of the query range? For example, let's consider an interval of length 5 starting from here. We can't directly print out a value from our table. But can we decompose an interval of size 5 into two smaller intervals? Let's find the greatest number that is smaller or equal to 5 and is a power of 2. That would be 4. 
Let's try to divide this interval of size 5 into two good intervals of size 4. We can do that by taking the first four indices of this interval and the last four indices of this interval. And we know that we've already computed the answer for both of those because those are good intervals and the table stores the minimum value in every good interval. What we could now just do is we could combine the answer for these two intervals. Keep in mind that the problem we're solving is that of minimization. It doesn't matter how many times we consider each element as long as we consider each element once. What that means is as long as we've considered every element in this range at least once and try to minimize our answer with it, it doesn't matter if I try to minimize it again with 3 or 7 or 5 because we can see that there's an overlap in the good intervals of size 4. We don't need to care about this overlap because we're considering each element at least once. And this is the true power of sparse tables. When we have such functions where they don't change after we've considered the val each value at least once, we can answer queries in constant time. Let's look at some code to do this now. So in the code over here, I'm just taking an input. N is the number of elements and Q is the number of queries. First, I want to pre-compute a logarithm array, which for every number from 1 to N, basically stores the floor of the logarithm of that number. This is useful so that we don't end up recalculating the logarithm every time, which is actually going to be quite slow. Next, I'm going to declare my sparse table. Then I'm going to set the elements of the first row equal to the elements of the initial array. Now, we iterate from i is equal to 1 to log of n. And j goes from 0 up to n index such that it still has a good interval of length to the power i from that index. So we're basically trying to avoid computing black cells in our sparse table in the diagram I showed you earlier. Don't get intimidated by these binary shift operators here. It's just a pretty neat and efficient way of calculating to the power i. So one left shift i is basically giving us to the power i. Now inside this loop, the value for sparse of i comma j is just the minimum value of so we go to the previous row and we take to the power i minus one elements from there so that's just basically sparse of i minus one comma j and then we go to the power i elements forward from there and we again take the cell in that row so this is just the previous row and then this is to the power i minus one now for our queries, we just take in the query interval length. And after that, i is basically the logarithm of the closest number smaller than the interval length. That is also a perfect power of 2, smaller than or equal to actually. And now we can just decompose our interval of two into two smaller segments. That's just parse of i comma l. And we take the ending of our interval we go back to the power i elements and but we also add one because each cell actually stores the answer for j to j plus to the power i minus one and we just take that cell and we combine them so for example for an interval of length five this would take two intervals of length four and we just combine the answer as we saw in the diagram so thanks for watching everyone. Let me know if you enjoyed this new format and if you have any feedback. Also let me know what type of videos you would like to see in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like.